is I want to talk about, I'll give you a little health um, nugget here, and uh, then I'm going to be talking about something that's very important, I believe, for these last days. How many of you believe we're in the last days? The Lord's coming back, isn't he? You know, we keep saying he's coming back soon, but I don't think we realize how soon. I think it is coming really quickly. Well, what I wanted to talk to you about this, uh, today is a herb that goes back to, basically, to creation. It's been around, it's been in history, it's in the Bible. And this particular herb has been used in the Old Testament for treatment of the sick, and as a spice. And the Romans and the Greeks also used it for that purpose. And even the Greek physician, Hippocrates, he's been considered the father of medicine, has used this herb. It's an herb that you either love or hate. And unfortunately, I'm not one that likes it. <laughs> and my wife can eat it by the hands full. It's called cilantro. So... How many of you like cilantro? Oh my, I guess I'm in a minority. <laughs> How many of you don't like it? Oh good, at least I'm in with a few of you. I think that's important, don't you? I don't want to be the only one. Well, what it does, it basically, it, it, it actually can cause, um, can help with hardening of the arteries. Any of you in here have blood pressure problems? Problems, cardiovascular problems of some kind? Well, this particular little green leafy vegetable or herb can really help in that area because it's high in what we call flavonoids. And I'm going to talk about flavonoids in the next day or two because they're so very important in order for us to maintain health today. But cilantro is loaded with them and it will help to actually dissolve plaque in the arteries. Isn't that good news? It will definitely work with uh, blood pressure problems. And that's not all. It's excellent blood uh, for your blood sugar levels to bring them back up to normal. They have done experiments and they have found that a good helping of cilantro extract. Now this is a concentrated form, a liquid form that you would take that has brought diabetes down to normal limits within six hours, believe it or not. So it's something, those of you with blood sugar problems, that you should really consider using. Now, when you have hardening of the arteries, the arteries become flabby, and they become basically blocked, as we know. We've probably all known somebody in our family or friends we have that have had heart attacks or severe cardiovascular problems. Well, what this does, it will help to build, to get rid of that plaque buildup, as I mentioned. So it's something that you should want to use. It also reduces death by heart attack greatly. If you're using cilantro on a regular basis, you have a heart attack, the chances are you're going to survive it. So it is something that you can do. Now, what they recommend, I can't even picture this myself, and that is, <coughs> excuse me, is to make a tea out of it. They say take two teaspoons of the cilantro, and it doesn't have to be dry. It can be fresh cilantro, and steep it, and then add honey or peppermint oil to it. So it's something you could try and use on a regular basis. Other benefits of it, is that it is a great digestive aid. So people that are having problems with digestion, this is something that you could use for that. It also is anti-inflammatory. Now when I look at blood, when I do live blood cell analysis on people, I see oxidation and lots of indications towards inflammation in the body itself. And this is one way to help with that situation. We're going to talk more about free radicals and what we can do naturally to keep them down because it's a definite problem. In the blood, we call it oxidative stress. Oxidative stress and free radicals are basically the same thing. It's just different terms. And so we need to bring that down to normal. It also helps, as I mentioned, uh, to bring down blood sugar. 
and also cholesterol. How many of you maybe, you don't have to raise your hand, but how many of you in here may have higher cholesterol than you'd like to have, LDL cholesterol? This will help to bring it down. And it definitely will bring down the free radicals. So cilantro is something that I would use. And I hoped that I can learn to like it. <laughs> so anyway, um, I'd like to talk to you tonight a little bit before I get into, <coughs> you have to excuse me, a little allergy this time of year. And another thing, where we live in the desert, I just quickly mention this. Um, and we're going to talk about this in a little bit because I'm a health educator and we work with health and we work to bring people's health back. And one of the things that we try to do is to come up with things that are causing disease today. And whether uh, some of you probably are not even aware of it, but we are being bombarded with aluminum, barium, strontium, and other methods from the sky. And I have a five-minute uh, little DVD you're going to see in a minute, and it'll prove that it's the government because it shows a naval, right on the side of the plane it says Navy. So uh, you'll be able to see that in a few minutes. But first of all, because we're living in the end time and there's going to be a lot of frightening things happen in our lives. Would you agree with me? Are we prepared? The question is, are we prepared? Are we prepared to, to see this video? Are we prepared to know what's really going on in this world? And some people are not. <coughs> in my own church, um, I was teaching Sabbath school a few weeks ago. And the subject was on the environment. So I brought it in, I brought this in, and I showed this very video to the Sabbath school class, and all of a sudden there was an uproar, and I'm being accused of using scare tactics. And I was told to stop. But this, this group here, I know, have your eyes open. And unfortunately, in our churches today, we are truly Laodicean from the standpoint of view that many people would rather sleep than wake up. So it's time for us to be awake. And it's time for us to deal with this thing called fear. So we're going to look at fear for a minute uh, before we uh, actually get into this part of it. Because I think it's very, very important. And I'd like to just read something to you in Revelation chapter 14, which you're all familiar with, the three angels' messages. And it is uh, important for us to really go over that time and again because we are to give a warning message. Do you agree with me? That's part of what we are to do, is to give a warning message. It's to wake people up, not only people in our church, but people from around the world. And by so doing, they have an opportunity to be in this last work. And they have an opportunity to make it right with the Lord Jesus Christ because of what's coming soon upon this earth is very frightening. And <coughs> I apologize for this cough. <coughs> but let me just read just two verses. as the first angel's message found in Revelation 14, 6 and 7. And I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel, to preach unto them that dwell on the earth. Now, aren't we here to learn the everlasting gospel? Now, what are we doing as far as sharing it with others? Are we sharing it? Or are we keeping this message to ourselves? You don't have to answer. But think about this. That there's a dying world out there, and oftentimes we are not giving the everlasting gospel. In fact, in many churches today, you hardly you ever hear the word three angels message any longer. And it's time that we, in our own churches, stand up for what's right. Amen. And to be able to give it to the three angels message. I gave a sermon in the pulpit not long ago. I, I basically have become the assistant pastor. We have a small church, and we have a pastor once or twice a month. And then guess what? I have to take it. And the, I, I got up, and we talked about these issues right here. And again, nobody said anything during the service, but I got flack afterwards. And the fact is, it is t I'm not trying to do a scare tactic. I'm trying to wake people up. And sometimes we have to hit people between the eyes in order to wake them up. It goes on. Um, <clears throat> in the, three, the first angel's message, it says, um, let's see here, preach unto them that dwell on the earth and to every nation and kindred and tongue 
and people. Saying with a loud voice, fear God. This is where our fear should go, would be to God. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. I'm going to need it probably. But we, that's where our fear should be. We should never fear man. We should never, ever fear man. Now, I'm going to get into some situations in the Bible in just a moment of people that became very brave. But let me finish reading this first. So, saying with a loud voice, fear God and give glory to him, for the hour of his judgment is come. Doesn't that sound like present tense? The hour of his judgment's come. So we need to realize that we have a God that's full of love as far as ju and also judgment. And part of that love has to do with the judgment in which he's going to bring upon the earth, which he's already doing. So, the hour of his judgment has come, and worship him that made heaven and earth and the sea and the fountains of water. So this is part of our message. And we need to apply it in our own lives first. But just look at this thing called fear. We can go back into the Bible. Oh, thank you. I got two waters now. I appreciate that. And this one's nice and cold. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, brothers. I really appreciate that. And so uh, we can go back into the time that Jesus walked upon the earth. Uh, let's just look at this thing called fear, and we have to look at it from a human standpoint of view. We can look at Peter. We can look at him, and we find in the, the book of Mark that, uh, in fact, I'll just read it to you. And Mark uh, chapter 14, verse 29. The Lord is about to go into Gethsemane. He's about to be betrayed. He's about to, to have to go through the cross. But Peter says, said unto him, After all, shall... Uh, let me see here. I've got these bifocals on. But Peter said unto him, Although all shall offend thee, I will not. You remember that? He said he wouldn't offend him. I'll be right there. I'm willing to die beside you. I'm willing to die for you. And then a few minutes, a few hours later, he's in the garden, and then Jesus is betrayed, and he takes his sword, and what's he do? It cuts off the ear of the high priest's servant. Then he fled, fled with the other uh, apostles and disciples that were there at the time. They all took off and ran away. Then later, because of fear, he denied his Lord three times. Have we ever denied our Lord because of fear? Because we didn't fit in. We didn't feel we thought we would be rejected. Rejection is a horrible feeling in which people should not have. We need to be brave. We need to stand for truth. And we need to pray to God to remove fear from our life. Now, uh, we can also look at others in the Bible. We can look at Queen Esther for an example. We find that Queen Esther, just quickly, her life, she was adopted by her uncle, uh, Mordecai, uh, after her parents died. Well, later on, as she grew up, the, the king actually, uh, Vashai, the queen, the queen the king actually invited her to come down for a drunken party, and she refused to do that, and as a result, she was banished from the kingdom. You could probably remember that. And a long story short is that it came to the place that the children of Israel were to be killed on a certain day. And when that happened, uh, she was asked by her uncle to intervene, go to the king, try to stop this from happening. And she, at first she was afraid, and then he said, you're going to die too. So we all, you need to be with us, and uh, you need to go to the king. You can save your people. So she did, almost at the last minute. She went to the king, and then she, uh, before, she before that, though, she said, a, a point, uh, three days. And during that three days, fast and pray. Fast and pray. Because the king has not seen me in over a month. And if I walk into the king tonight, be it, uh, not invited, unless he holds his scepter out, I can be killed. And she finally said, well, if I die, I die. And she went to the king, and we know the story, and the children of Israel were saved. Well, 
One of the things we need to realize when it comes to fear is that we're going to come to a time very shortly though where we maybe not be able to buy or sell. When that happens, what are you going to do? Are you going to starve? Maybe. I doubt that. The Lord said if food and water would be sure, didn't he? But we may go days without food through our trial. Uh, the question I'd like to ask you tonight, what is your fear? You don't have to tell me. But what are you afraid of? I made a little list here, if I can find it. And are you afraid of famine? Are you afraid that one of these days there won't be food in the grocery store and that's probably going to happen? Are you afraid? In fact, I'll just say this right now, that <clears throat> from what we have been told by the global elite, which I heard on Alex Jones' radio program, I heard Lindsey Williams interviewed. Anybody know who he is? Yeah, several of you do. Lindsey Williams, and I'll say more about him later, give you more background, said that by fall this year that the dollar will be evaluated by 40%. If he's right, that means the dollars we have today is going to be 40% less valuable by fall. <coughs> and so if that's the result, does that scare you? It concerns me, but we have learned not to be afraid. Because we know all things work together for good of those who love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. So as a result of that, with that in mind, we know God is preparing a people to go through the time of trouble. He's preparing the people to be alive at the time he comes back. And everyone in this room, I believe, has that opportunity. But it's up to you. It's up to me to get myself ready. I can't get you ready and you can't get me ready. Only God can help me to do that. I have to depend upon him. Are you afraid that you won't have water to drink, that you'll be thirsty? You know, in the desert where I live, <coughs> if the power grid goes out because we're on a well, we're not going to have water. We're in the process now of trying to do a windmill to be able to pull it up. We're too deep to do a hand pump. I mean, we'd have to have a handle out to there if it didn't break in order to get the leverage to pull that thing up. So uh, we, we, we're working on a windmill. But the fact is that I can't worry about it, but I have to do my part, don't I? Amen. I have to get prepared. Amen. And so this is a preparation that we all need to do. The next thing that I put on here is, do you, are you afraid you're going to lose your home? <coughs> are you going to have to live with someone else or in a tent or something of this nature. If you do, it's only for a short time anyway because the Lord's coming back. We've had a couple of couples in my, our church that have lost their home. And they were, they were very upset at first, but they have really got a hold of themselves and they realize it's all in the province of God that they have lost their home. And it's made them stronger towards the Lord. We have special programs at my home. We're studying end time events. And only a few people from the church come. Only a few people. Because fear is keeping some of them away. Are you afraid that you'll lose your family? Well, I have family members that, that make fun of me because I keep the seventh day Sabbath. I've been told by my family that you keep the wrong day. And this is something that we've gone through for years, and they're finally to the place where they don't say much anymore. But I know how they feel, and they make fun of me behind my back. Do I lose my family? It's a possibility. How about work? How about an income? Are you worried or afraid of losing that? I just want to ask another question here before I finish this part. How big is God to you in your life? How big? Is he a big God or a small God? Well, if you're, if you're worried and afraid, he's a small God. Because he's a big God, and if you will go to him, he will take care of you. Maybe not in the manner in which you would like, but he will take care of you. And so we've got to overcome fear before we can look at stuff like this, because this is part of the health message. We're going to get into diseases that are being caused by these chemtrails. 
<coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> and I think my cough is partially because of that. I really do. And uh, anyway, let's look at a couple of other things. First of all, are you afraid of earthquakes? No, we've had a, a number of earthquakes. And I'm going to get into that maybe tomorrow, because if you will look at the earthquakes uh, starting way back with Chile and all the way down to, to, the, to the one we had in Mexico just a couple of weeks ago, you will find a pattern. About 188 days in between each one. One was 187. Now, that's not coincidental. That's not natural. But we'll get into that. These are frightening things. And we'll get into... Uh, the, if you really want to look into the earthquakes and what it's going to do in California and throughout the nation, go to 9T, starting with page 92 and 93. Sister White writes about it. 9T, 92, and 93, and I'll talk more about that later. Now, out where we live, we get tremendous wind. We've had more wind this year than uh, in the last 12 months than I think we've ever had. I got tiles on my roof that's come off that I got to put back on when I get home. And, uh, We've had tremendous winds. I clean up the place, and before I know it, the sand's all blown in, and, it, uh, and I have to go start all over again to clean it. But yet, we're not afraid of it. And we're not afraid of flood. And we were flooded one time to the point that the water came this far, and I mean it literally, to going underneath the door of the house. It's a flash flood that happened out in the desert. So we have to be on purpose, and we have to be brave. I'd like to just quickly mention, because I'm, I'm looking at the clock, and I do want to talk about health problems and which come about from the fallout from these airplanes. But let's just took, take a look at the reformers for a minute, one in particular, John Wycliffe. John Wycliffe was one of the earliest reformers. And in his life, he was basically an academic individual. He had a degree or education in civil law and canon law and philosophy. He taught for years himself. But during this period of time, he discovered the flaws of the church. And the church in those days were selling indulgences. And that was something he went against. An indulgence is a piece of paper you can buy it's, that would be forgiveness of all your sins. He was against also the fact in baptisms with children that they charged for that. If a person died to be prayed out of hell, out of purgatory, they had to pay <coughs> excuse me for that. So he really was persecuted during this time. Now he went to trial a couple of times, but he had friends in high places. They were actually princes or dukes, and, and they saved him. But then, at the last, at the last, he was banned from a academia, and as I understand it, he went into the Netherlands, and there he had the idea of translating the Bible into English, into the common language of the people. That was the days before printing presses, so every Bible had to be handwritten. And once he did that, there was no law in England against that, so he was providing these Bibles, and people that had money could buy a whole Bible, and uh, some of the people could only buy one book of the Bible, and it was the Word of God was being opened up before the people. Well, the church of the, the Roman church, because of that, they became very furious, and they called him to another trial. And at this trial, they were going to try to burn him at the stake. But God took him, and he fell asleep and passed away. He didn't have to go through that. But 30, 40 years after his death, they dug up his bones, they burned them, and they put them into a brook which flowed into a river which flowed into the ocean. And his ashes were spread all over the world. And what has happened to Wycliffe? They have translated all over the world. They didn't realize what they had done symbolically. So are we brave enough to stand up for truth? Just a couple more uh, verses I'd like to read, then I'm going to get into the health part of it. It's in Job uh, chapter 3. 
Job chapter 3. Okay, and I want to look at uh, verse, um, verse 25. Job chapter 3, verse 25. It goes like this. This is Job speaking. For the thing which I greatly feared is come upon me. Now, have you ever feared and feared on something and then that th came upon you? Well, it happened to me. I'll just share that with you real quickly. Um, I found out probably about two or three years ago that the, my, the person that did my taxes and was doing the counting but did them wrong. He was an enrolled agent, but he did it wrong. And then I feared the IRS. You ever feared the IRS? <laughs> well, some of you have feared the IRS like I did. But I, I just kind of let it go. I didn't do anything. And then about 18 months ago, I got a notice in the mail that I'm going to be audited for four years, and plus current year, five years. So I tried to find somebody to help me. I went to a CPA that specialized in, in tax problems, but he was so expensive, I said, I can't afford him. So I went to a friend of mine who was an attorney, a Christian attorney. He's also a part-time pa pastor. And uh, he told me about a lady. And I called her. And she said, sure, I'll help you. And to this date, she hasn't charged me at all. And so she has... Uh, she has been 35 years working against the IRS. God worked a miracle because when, it came, when the audit was finished, I did old taxes, and the, uh, the auditor came to my home. She met us there, and we talked about it, and he told us that you owe the tax, but I'm not going to assess a penalty. Can you believe it? No penalty and no interest. And so we now are, have gone to the IRS for offer and compromise. We are trying to compromise and pay our lower tax. And it looks like they're going to do that for us. It takes a year for that process to go through. But this is something that my fear, I think, drew this kind of a problem to me. And, but Job, as he says here, for the... For the thing which I greatly feared is come upon me, and that which I was afraid of is come unto me. So let's not be fearful and draw things to ourselves. You know, I don't know what happens. Maybe Satan knows uh, the fears in which we have, and he tries to bring about those type of things that we're more afraid of. So it's something that we want to be aware of. Okay, there's others. One more, I think, and we'll stop on that and get going into the health part of it. If you'll turn with me to Revelation uh, chapter 21. Revelation 21 is verse 8, I want to read. I've read it here before. Okay. <coughs> Pardon me. It's terrible to come here and then do that all the way through a talk, and I apologize for that. But anyway, these are the people that will not be in the kingdom of God. It says, but the fearful, you notice the fearful is the first on the list? And <coughs> unbelieving, the abominable, murderers, um, whoremongers, sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. So we need to overcome fear in our lives and stand tall for the Lord Jesus Christ. All right, well, I'm going to change gears a little bit. <coughs> Let's take a look, and not at the video just yet, but I'm going to show you a video in a minute. But I wanted to read something to you. Um, what we find in these chemtrails, which have been analyzed, is basically heavy metals. And we went over this a year ago, but just in review, we find in what they're spraying today, and they call it geoengineering. 
The geoengineering is a way t they claim to reflect the sun because of global warming. But it's killing people. It's making people very, very sick. And as a result, uh, the hospitals are now filled with people with pulmonary types of problems. And um, I'd like to just read a couple of little paragraphs from a newsletter I got from Dr. Russell Blaylock. How many know about Dr. Russell Blaylock? Oh, several of you. This is one that goes back to uh, the issue is November 2010. Aluminum poison hiding in plain sight. That's the name of the article. And he's talking now about a patient. I want to read this story to you. He says, my patient was a farmer, a man of strong principles with a deep sense of a morality, and a rock-solid commitment to the Christian beliefs. He had been splashed with pesticide, which, prepared to, which he prepared to dust his crops. After the, inc <coughs> the incident, he took a thorough shower and removed the pesticide from his skin. Despite his effort, a short time later he became ill and was taken to a doctor. He was treated with a drug that reverses the chemical process of pesticides, and he should have had full recovery. But he didn't. His condition continued to deteriorate. And this is what we find with, with uh, aluminum poisoning. And he gets into the whys in a minute, and I'll read a couple of verses, or um, uh, actually a couple sentences. Over time, the nerves in his arms and legs deteriorated. His speech was affected. He lost most of his coordination. He had difficulty putting thoughts together. And we find that with people now in society, maybe not to this degree, but they find that their coordination is off. They're having trouble with thoughts. They're having trouble with memory to be able to bring things back up to them. And this is causing a great deal of neurological problems. And as he goes on to explain, it can cause problems such as Lou Gehrig's disease, multiple sclerosis, Parkinson's, and other types of diseases of this nature because of the heavy metals. The heavy metals can cross over the blood-brain barrier and get into the brain itself. And when that happens, it uh, then can cause dementia, Alzheimer's, and a whole variety of other things that are partially the partial lists I've already given you. Now, this is a five-minute little uh, video. It's all it is. It's on chemtrails. It's different than what I showed you last year. It's no, there's no verbiage to it. Uh, they have music, which you can turn way down if you can on the music. I don't really like it. But uh, what it'll show is the planes in which they're using uh, to be able to do this. There must be thousands of planes around the world because it's a
snakes or parasites of infestation are due t to an advanced government engineered uh, program which is sprayed via chemtrails into the air. They are spraying actually parasites into the air. And guess who's getting them? All of us. So this is a major problem for health today. Now they have a test. If you want to, I'll, I'll give you the steps of the test to be able to test for yourself. First of all, let me give you the website. The website is Cure, C-U-R-E, Zone, Z-O-N-E, dot org. And then it has F-O-R-U-M-S slash F-M dot A-S-P question mark, small i, equals one two o three five three two, And that'll bring this file up, if you got it. If, if you didn't get it, I can put it on PowerPoint and bring it up tomorrow and you can get, uh, copy it off the screen. There's a lot of information here. Uh, because there's so many people sick in the desert, there's many people that have gotten together to try to turn us around. But if you want to find out if the parasites are in your uh, system themselves, let me give you the steps. This is something you can do at home. First of all, we're going to find out if they're in your gums. That's one place that they like to inhabit, inhibit, inhabit, get it right. Well, it's inhibitory too. But you want to brush your tree teeth very well. So you brush your teeth. This is step one. You brush your teeth very well. Then you want to rinse your mouth with water thoroughly. That's step two. Uh, I'll go slow so you have time to write it down. Then you want to mix two t teaspoons of, well, they have a, an option here. Let me go to the option. It says w red wine, and I don't think we want to do that. Um, it says mix two teaspoons of cranberry juice, unsweetened cranberry juice, along with one teaspoon of hydrogen peroxide. This is what, uh, whatever percentage the, the least amount is. What's that, 3%, 4%, something like that? 3%. And then you're going to swish it around vigorously in your mouth, and this is the hard part, for five minutes. Then you will spit it out. This is step five now. You spit all the rinse into a bathroom cup. And then you look at it and you'll see fibers that are floating in the cup. And you want to carefully examine and rinse the fibers uh, for they are very uh, the invariable present. They say here that they, of everyone that's tried it, the majority of people have been positive. So this is serious of what uh, these parasites can do to our bodies and to our lives. Now, this is what they have in it. This is what the spray has in it. We all know that it has aluminum. And the aluminum, uh, actually, along with the barium that's in it, uh, crosses the blood-brain barrier and can bring about dementia or Alzheimer's. If anyone's having memory problems, this is a possibility and later on, another, one of the other meetings, we'll talk about how we can work to get this out of our head, out of the brain. One thing you can do right now is they have found that flaxseed oil gets aluminum out of the body. So flaxseed oil, you could use two to three tablespoons a day. The barium can cause cancer. Isn't that wonderful? And what it does, it knocks out potassium in the body. And if you have a potassium deficiency, it's going to weaken the muscles of the body itself. It also can cause leg cramps. Does anybody in here have leg cramps? A lot of people. It's because the potassium could have been eliminated or pushed out of the body because of the fallout of the barium. It also 
uh, can cause le uh, restless leg syndrome. And I had that in the desert. And once I started eating more potassium foods, and I even supplemented with potassium, it went away. They say it's not curable. It is. Uh, the next one is titanium. They're finding titanium in little particles in this mixture. They also find magnesium. Now, magnesium is something good, you might think. But magnesium combined with aluminum causes blood clots. Has anyone here had unexplained blood clots? I see a, hand, a couple of hands. This could be why. And it's increasing sinus infections and also uh, pulmonary with the lungs. And what it's doing with the lungs, it can cause bronchitis, pneumonia, as you saw up here. It can cause upper respiratory types of problems. And inflammation can form throughout the body. And then it has stromium in it. Now, stromium is radioactive. In fact, uh, during the time in the 1950s, 60s, maybe early 70s when they were testing for uh, weaponry, uh, it, it actually spread all over the earth what's called stromium-90. It's everywhere. It's radioactive. And it's in the ground. And it's in plants uh, sometimes. And this radioactive ingredient can cause cancer. Well, isn't cancer an epidemic today? Don't we see a lot of it? Don't we see a lot of of also heart disease, and it can cause a lot of problems like that. One thing to help with that is to use bentonite clay on a regular basis to pull it out. Or even charcoal will help, but it's not as effective against stromium and against the other metals as much as bentonite clay. So that's something that you could use. Another thing you could use is ground flaxseed. Ground flaxseed also helps to pull it out. And I know a lot of you do grind flaxseed and use it. Keep it up. Maybe even take more of it. Because we're living in a time that is so polluted that this pollution can cause so many different illnesses in our lives today. Now, there's a... I heard, and I, uh, nothing has ever happened with this that I'm aware of, but there's a group of attorneys that want to sue the government because of this. I don't think that's going to happen. I'm sure they'll be discouraged in some way. But the fact is that they did st all kinds of studies dealing with uh, the aluminum spray early on. This is back in probably, oh, five, six years ago, except the impact on human beings and the health of humans. Not only does it cause problems with humans, but how many of you like to watch birds? How many of you? A lot of you. How many of you have seen that birds have diminished in number? A lot. Where we were, where we are, we used to be in refuge for quail. We used to have hundreds, literally, on our property. We have 15 acres, and we used to have hundreds of quail. This year, I've only seen less than 10. We also, every year, we were also a nesting ground for, for doves. I don't know how many dove nests we would have, but uh, we would have, oh, 50, 40, 50 doves on the property. This year, I've counted th uh, three. We also were a stopover ground for migratory birds. They would come to our place, because we have lots of trees, and they would... Some of them would nest there, the songbirds. We've only seen one pair this year. And so it's a major problem that's affecting the environment. Our environment is greatly affected, and we are very, very polluted as a result of that. So we got awful quiet in here. So I think, you know, you, I th just don't be afraid. We have to do what we have to do. Take your flax oil, take your bentonite clay, take your ground flax in addition to the oil itself. Do what you need to do to stay healthy. And one of the things we need to do is to be able to follow 
the basic laws of health. And we oftentimes overlook those laws of health. You know, pure water will help this, to keep the body cleansed inside if we drink enough of it. And this is what I find that when I do live blood cell, I find that the majority of people are dehydrated. They're not drinking water. They're drinking other things, soda pop, things with caffeine in it. And I know that some of you in here probably drink ca caffeinated uh, drink. This is going to make you even more dehydrated. We want to clean the body. Proper use of water is used externally as well as internally. So drink your water. As we've talked about water before in years past, the rule of thumb for water today is one ounce of water for every two pounds of body weight. So you take your body weight, cut it in half, and that's the amount of, of water you should drink a day in ounces. And the, there's a big trend now in our area for people to drink alkaline water. Anybody in here drink alkaline water? There's a few of you. You have to be careful with alkaline water. It can cause other problems. Yes, it'll alkalize the body, but at the same time, if people drink it too close to a meal or too soon afterwards, it neutralizes the acid in the stomach and you're not getting your nutrition. I've, I have looked at blood over the last several months on many people that have taken alkaline water. Like I say, it's a big thing in the desert. And I noticed that their blood looks horrible. Because I think they're using it, they're drinking it with their meals, or they're using food preparation with it. A lot of problems have come up, and as a result, they're not assimilating their foods. And their energy level goes down. And that's one of the things that aluminum does too, by the way. It takes your energy away. It affects it. And you also become more of a couch potato. You don't feel like doing exercise. And that's another law of health that we know that we need to do. <coughs> you don't feel like getting out and doing what you need to do. And then proper rest. How many of you go to bed at a re reasonable hour? Well, I kind of mess up on that one myself. But I'm trying. And, but the thing is that we need to follow those eight laws of health in order to maintain proper health. And particularly in the day and age that we live in, with all the toxins that are being released, to be able to bring down mankind. So I just want to encourage you to do that. Stay away from those stimulants. Stay away from caffeine. If anyone's into alcohol, stay away from it. There's chemicals in alcohol today, and particularly in wine, that can also cause problems. They tell us, oh, drink a little red wine for your heart's sake, but they don't tell you that they increase the risk of, of cancer in the esophagus, the larynx, and the stomach. So we want to take that law of health, the stimulusness, and stay away from it. And we also, in the proper use of water, back to that just for a moment, we want to not only drink a lot of it to be able to flush the system to help clean it out, but we also need a good amount of it so that we can get into the sunshine and get that vitamin D. There's more and more research on vitamin D that's coming out every day. And vitamin D is so critical. In fact, I'll probably talk about it later this week a little bit on vitamin D. But there's nothing that is better than the sun. I don't know now about having all these pollutants in the air, what that's going to do. I really don't know. And it may not be the best thing in the world for us to do, but yet at the same time we need vitamin D and supplementation is good, but at the same time it is not the very best for our body. We need the sun. So if you have to, get out early in the morning before they pollute the air and destroy our air and get as much sun as you can. That's what I do. I get up early and get out and do my work. And because if I wait till the afternoon, I'm going to choke and cough all afternoon while I'm outside. So, you know, we like to open up the doors and open up the windows, but we're almost afraid to do it anymore in certain parts of the house, of the, of the day itself. All right. I know I've covered some ground here tonight. And I'm wondering... Um, does anybody have any questions on me in the next two minutes? Yes, ma'am. Um, I don't mean to be rude, but how do we know that the chemtrails aren't just like ice from the jets? 
you can, if you'll look and you'll see, I, I, the question was, how, can, how will we know that they're actually chemicals? If they go from horizon to horizon, they're chemicals. If you look at a regular contrail, it may go, you have a plane, it may go this far behind it. And if you watch it, it'll dissipate. In, in most cases. I have, we're, we have a flight pattern right over the top of our house and, uh, from uh, Ontario Airport. And they're way up there. And we can see the, the, uh, the contrails. And uh, we can see that they dissipate really rapidly. Now, if they're very, very high, that could be a problem. There could be ice up there, definitely, if they're way up high. Okay. Any, uh, yes, sir? You're talking about all of this being in the air and about testing yourself to find out if you have it in your mouth and stuff. Parasites, uh huh. Right. What about the water then? Have you tested the water? And no, out but. What's in the I haven't, but the others have. I have uh, DVDs on that, and they have found that water is, is becoming very alkaline. Uh, alkaline. And uh, they find, too, that, you know, in public water districts, they add aluminum to it. There's a process to be able to pull the sediment to the bottom. So unless you filter your water, you're probably getting, uh, you're probably getting aluminum in your water. Most likely. Okay, one more question, and then we've got to quit. Yeah, way in the back. Uh, so, retrenching from aluminum cans also be a bad idea? I'm sorry, I can't hear. Oh, you definitely, aluminum cans are a definite problem, uh, particularly if it's a diet soda. Aspartame will chelate the metal right off the can, and you're going to be drinking the, the aluminum in the can itself. So, it's something to be very careful with. I will not drink anything out of aluminum. That's my own personal preference. And we've got to do the best we can, brothers and sisters, because time is short, and our lives are very precious. And unless we take care of it, no one else is going to do that.